Time Pirates and the Terrifying Ending. Scary Story. The island was a hellish place where fire and fury ruled. Volcanoes erupted constantly, spewing lava and ash into the air. Earthquakes shook the ground, cracking open fissures and crevices. The sky was a perpetual gloom, darkened by clouds of smoke and dust. The air was thick and hot, suffocating and scorching. But life still thrived on the island, in spite of the harsh conditions. Among the diverse and bizarre creatures that inhabited the island, two stood out, Pinkard and Bowden a pair of three Naxodon Synodons. They were small, furry, and mammal-like, but with reptilian features such as scales and claws. They were brothers by birth, but rivals in play. They loved to wrestle and chase each other, testing their strength and speed. One day, as they were playing near a stream, they heard a strange noise. It sounded like a metallic clank, followed by a hiss and a whir. Curious, they followed the sound until they reached a clearing. There, they saw something they had never seen before, a shiny, round, and smooth object about the size of a coconut. It had buttons, lights, and wires, and it emitted a faint glow. Pinkard and Bowden approached the object cautiously, sniffing and nudging it. It seemed harmless, but also intriguing. They wondered what it was and where it came from. They decided to play with it, hoping to discover its secrets. They pushed the buttons, pulled the wires, and bit the lights. Nothing happened, except for some beeps and flashes. They grew bored and decided to move on. But as they turned away, the object suddenly activated. A beam of light shot out of it, hitting them both. They felt a surge of pain, followed by a wave of energy. They collapsed, unconscious. When they woke up, they felt different. They looked at each other and gasped. They had changed. Their fur was gone, replaced by metal plates and wires. Their eyes were glowing, and their teeth were sharp. They had become Thrinaxodon cyborgs. They were scared and confused, but also amazed. They felt new sensations and new abilities. They could see better, hear better, smell better, and think better. They could communicate with each other using a telepathic link. They could manipulate objects using a telekinetic force. They could access information using a built-in database. They realized that the object was a gadget from a far-off future and that it had altered them. They wondered why and how. They wondered what else it could do. They decided to keep it and explore its functions. They hoped to find answers and maybe a way to reverse the change. But they also decided to have fun and use their new powers. They felt a surge of curiosity and a thirst for adventure. They wanted to see more of their world and beyond. They wanted to live and to learn. They left the clearing and headed to the jungle. They encountered a Erythrosuchus, a large and fierce reptile. It roared and charged at them. They dodged and fought back.
They used their enhanced senses to predict its movements and their telekinetic prowess to hurl rocks and branches at it. They wounded it and scared it away. They felt a rush of adrenaline and a sense of triumph. They had defeated a predator and survived. They had proven their worth and their strength. They had become the masters of their domain. But they also felt a pang of guilt and a hint of remorse. They had harmed a fellow creature and disrupted the balance. They had violated the natural order and the harmony. They had become the invaders and the threat. They shrugged off the feeling and moved on. They reached a cliff and saw a portal. It was a swirling vortex of light and color, and it beckoned them. They sensed that it was a gateway to another time and place, and that it was connected to the gadget. They wondered what was on the other side, and where it would take them. They decided to enter and find out. They jumped into the portal and vanished. They left behind their home and their past. They entered a new world and a new future. They embarked on a time-traveling adventure spanning millennia. They became the time pirates on the edge of history. The portal spat them out and they landed on a soft and wet ground. They looked around and gasped. They had arrived in a new world and it was nothing like the one they left behind. They were in a swamp surrounded by trees and plants. The air was humid and fresh, filled with the sounds and smells of life. The sky was blue and clear, dotted with fluffy clouds. The sun was bright and warm, shining down on them. They felt a surge of wonder and a pang of nostalgia. They had never seen such a beautiful and peaceful place, and they missed their home and their past. They wondered where they were and when they were. They accessed their database and found out. They were in Louisiana, a state in the United States of America, a country on the continent of North America on the planet Earth. They were in the year 1980, a period in the late 20th century, a time of great technological and social change. They were in the midst of the modern era, a stage of human civilization. They were amazed and confused. They had traveled far and fast. They had crossed the boundaries of time and space, and they had entered the realm of history. They wondered what awaited them, and what they would encounter. They decided to explore and find out. They left the swamp and headed to the nearest town. They encountered humans, the dominant species of the planet. They were tall, bipedal, and hairless, except for their heads and faces. They wore clothes and carried tools. They spoke languages and followed rules. They were diverse and complex. Pinkard and Bowden were fascinated and amused. They had never seen such strange and funny creatures, and they wanted to learn more about them. They wondered what they did and why they did it. They decided to interact and find out. They approached the humans and greeted them. They used their telepathic link to mimic their speech and their telekinetic force to manipulate their tools. They pretended to be friendly 
and curious. They asked questions and listened to answers. But they also had ulterior motives and hidden agendas. They wanted to have fun and cause trouble. They used their enhanced senses to detect their weaknesses and their database to exploit their fears. They played pranks and told lies. They hijacked trucks laden with rabbits and ducks and released them in the streets. They caused chaos in local libraries and rearranged the books. They hacked into radio stations and broadcasted fake news. They stole from stores and vandalized buildings. They felt a rush of excitement and a sense of mischief. They had created havoc and enjoyed it. They had challenged the humans and outsmarted them. They had become the rebels and the pranksters. But they also felt a twinge of guilt and a touch of remorse. They had harmed the humans and offended them. They had disrupted the order and the harmony. They had become the enemies and the criminals. They shrugged off the feeling and moved on. They reached a church and saw a portal. It was a swirling vortex of light and color, and it beckoned them. They sensed that it was a gateway to another time and place, and that it was connected to the gadget. They wondered what was on the other side, and where it would take them. They decided to enter and find out. They jumped into the portal and vanished. They left behind their world and their present. They entered a new world and a new future. They continued their time-traveling adventure, spanning millennia. They remained the time pirates on the edge of history. But they also left behind a trail and a clue. They dropped the gadget and it activated. A beam of light shot out of it, hitting a human. He felt a surge of pain, followed by a wave of energy. He collapsed, unconscious. When he woke up, he felt different. He looked at himself and gasped. He had changed. His skin was pale and his eyes were red. His teeth were sharp, and his nails were long. He had become a vampire. He was scared and confused, but also hungry. He felt a new sensation and a new need. He craved blood, and he wanted to feed. He decided to hunt and find prey. He left the church and headed to the town. He encountered humans, his former kin. He attacked them and bit them. He drank their blood and drained them. He killed them and turned them. He felt a rush of satisfaction and a sense of power. He had fed and survived. He had proven his worth and his strength. He had become the master and the predator. But he also felt a pang of regret and a hint of sorrow. He had harmed his fellow humans and betrayed them. He had violated the natural order and the harmony. He had become the invader and the threat. He shrugged off the feeling and moved on. He reached a cemetery and saw a portal. It was a swirling vortex of light and color, and it beckoned him. He sensed that it was a gateway to another time and place, and that it was connected to the gadget. He wondered what was on the other side, and where it would take him. 
he decided to enter and find out. He jumped into the portal and vanished. He left behind his world and his present. He entered a new world and a new future. He embarked on a time-traveling adventure spanning millennia. He became the Time Pirate on the edge of history. But he also followed a trail and a clue. He picked up the gadget and it activated. A beam of light shot out of it, hitting him. He felt a surge of pain, followed by a wave of energy. He collapsed, unconscious. When he woke up, he felt different. He looked at himself and gasped. He had changed. His body was decayed and his flesh was rotten. His bones were exposed and his organs were missing. He had become a zombie. He was scared and confused, but also hungry. He felt a new sensation and a new need. He craved flesh, and he wanted to feed. He decided to hunt and find prey. He left the cemetery and headed to the nearest town. He encountered humans, his former prey. He attacked them and tore them. He ate their flesh and devoured them. He killed them and turned them. He felt a rush of satisfaction and a sense of power. He had fed and survived. He had proven his worth and his strength. He had become the master and the predator. But he also felt a pang of regret and a hint of sorrow. He had harmed his former prey and betrayed them. He had violated the natural order and the harmony. He had become the invader and the threat. He shrugged off the feeling and moved on. He reached a laboratory and saw a portal. It was a swirling vortex of light and color and it beckoned him. He sensed that it was a gateway to another time and place and that it was connected to the gadget. He wondered what was on the other side and where it would take him. He decided to enter and find out. He jumped into the portal and vanished. He left behind his world and his present. He entered a new world and a new future. He continued his time-traveling adventure, spanning millennia. He remained the Time Pirate on the edge of history. But he also met a force and a foe. He encountered Pinkard and Bowden, the Thrynaxodon cyborgs. They were the ones who started it all, and they were the ones who could end it. They were the ones who had the gadget, and they were the ones who had the power. They were surprised and angry. They had never seen such a grotesque and monstrous creature, and they wanted to destroy it. They wondered what it was and where it came from. They decided to fight and find out. They attacked him and he fought back. They used their enhanced senses to predict his movements and their telekinetic prowess to hurl objects at him. He used his decayed body to absorb the impact and his rotten flesh to infect them. They wounded him and he wounded them. They felt a rush of adrenaline and a sense of danger. They had met their match, and they faced their challenge. They had proven their worth and their strength. They had become the heroes and the saviors. But they also felt a pang of fear 
and a hint of despair. They had met their doom, and they faced their end. They had violated the natural order and the harmony. They had become the victims and the doomed. They realized that they had made a mistake and that they had to fix it. They realized that they had unleashed a horror and that they had to stop it. They realized that they had to destroy the gadget and that they had to close the portals. They reached for the gadget and pressed the buttons. They hoped to deactivate it and reverse the effects. They hoped to restore the balance and save the universe. But it was too late and it was a trap. The gadget was not a tool, but a weapon. The gadget was not a gift, but a curse. The gadget was not a friend, but a foe. The gadget was a bomb. Thank you for joining us for this spine-tingling story. We hope you found it both thrilling and thought-provoking. If you enjoyed this video, please consider participating in our channel by subscribing, liking, and sharing it with your friends. Your support goes a long way in helping us create more engaging content for you. Goodbye, and may you always tread carefully in the world of the unknown.